Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Manisha and today I want to talk about the books I read in February. So last month I read eight books, so of course in the month of love I read three romances. I read three fantasy romances and then one thriller and one autobiography. Those books spend over 3,392 pages and I listened to three hours and 47 minutes and my average rating was 4.04 stars. So honestly, pretty decent, pretty solid. Kind of had a great reading month. So the first book I want to talk about is The Seven Year Slip. So this book, oh my gosh, literally I love this book so much. The first 75% of it, it captured the feeling of falling in love so perfectly. A six star beginning. I was just so captivated by the story. So basically this book follows uh, Clementine, our main character, and she inherits an apartment from her aunt who passes away. And basically this apartment can transport a person seven years in the past or seven years into the future. And what happens is she ends up falling in love with someone seven years in the past, and then it's kind of their love story to connecting in the present day. And again, I, I love their love story so much. It was so good, so phenomenal, heart fluttering, like just so perfect. The, it was almost like a fourth act conflict instead of a third act. So everything was like so rushed. The conflict was rushed and then the resolution was rushed. Everything just so conveniently worked out and it was just kind of glazed over. There was no real conflict. Like it was just, I don't know. It was like a minor miscommunication and I was like, this is not enough for like a full on conflict right now. <sighs> Anyways, that was so like, I did not like that at all. And then we have, that Clementine never has a full story arc on dealing with the grief of losing her aunt and we see so many instances of her like reflecting on her aunt and how meaningful her relationship with her aunt was and then we never get like a full circle moment we just I wish we got an actual resolution to her grief and like talking to someone and just working through it more realistically than her just kind of being like yeah, I've developed a little bit in this book, so I'm gonna move past it. It just didn't really make sense, in my opinion. So my final rating for this book was a 3.5. It really just fell quite a bit towards the end, and for me, like, the ending is very important. If you're not sticking the ending, like, that's gonna leave a sour taste in the reader's mouth. And that's, it wasn't sour. It was just so, like, neutral, like, just so... <sighs> I don't know, it was just not, it was just not my favorite. It was just not well done in my opinion. It's not that it was poorly done either. It was just very like, it was just done. Anyways, anyways. The next book I read was Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. And this was unfortunately a DNF. I DNF'd it at 28%. My main problem with this was that it was written in a way that was just not captivating to the reader at all. Or it was not captivating to me as a reader. I should preface with that. It was not like suitable for my reading taste because you start the book and you are getting info dumped so intensely. It's literally reading like a encyclopedia. And while you think, yeah, duh, it's literally has that word in the title. It literally says encyclopedia. But the format of this book is in journal entries. Why is she talking like that? Like, why? Why is she talking like that? Who talks like that? And it was just such a barrier for me to enter into the story. I could not fall into the story. I could tell that there was gonna be some type of romance developing and I would have loved to like read that. But oh my lord, it was just so bad. Like we get such, like it literally reads like an encyclopedia, like descriptions of Norway. And I'm sure that's such a beautiful landscape and it just gets ruined. Like I can't imagine things based on reading an encyclopedia. Maybe that's just like a fault of mine, but that's just, you're, I'm getting a lot of description and information, but that's not helping me imagine. It was just not a fave. I, it was just boring for me personally. And then I just, I personally just felt like Emily, the main character was so one dimensional. Like she had no personality except for doing her research. And I get it, like, don't get me wrong. I, I get the whole thing. Once you're in a certain branch of academics, whatever it is, you know, that can be, that can possibly become your entire personality trait, but I don't want to read about that. Like if you're not an interesting person to read about, why do I care what you're doing in your life? Like 
if I don't care about the character, it's so hard to dive in. So one, the writing, and then the, the main character on top of that being not my taste, DNF. I gave it a solid chance, almost 30%. And I'm being kind of harsh, like I would be open to picking it back up, but just at the time that I read it, I was just not interested in like forcing myself to continue in the hopes that it would get better. <laughs> Anyways, the next book I read was Daisy Hates and the Great Undoing. So I went into this book thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gonna love Julian. Like everyone reads this book and thinks, oh my gosh, I've gotten such a better understanding of Julian. Like I understand his motivations and why he thinks and does certain things in The Long Way Home. And I agree, of course, right? We have a whole perspective dedicated to him. And I definitely got an appreciation for how complex he is, how difficult it was to become responsible for his sister and then grow up so quickly, become like the head mafia person. But, you know, even sometimes like being in his head, I was like, why are you being mean to Magnolia? Like, like it's still, st it's still stuck in my head that like bit where he's trying to like humble her and make her not feel like she's that girl. And for no reason, I just left this book feeling very neutral about Julian. I see what's wrong and I see a lot of good in him and how that good and bad kind of comes into conflict when he's, you know, just interacting in his daily life with people and in his job. But, you know, I did like when he was soft with Magnolia and being loving and actually seeing what he's thinking during those moments. It did make the ending a bit sadder or much sadder. But overall, like, I think I th like the idea of them together, but not so much reading about them actually being together, if that makes sense. Okay. My biggest surprise was in the first Daisy Hates, I just didn't care about Daisy and Christian's relationship, honestly. I was just ready to get to the next Magnolia Parks book, but I'm a changed woman. I really, I've changed because I was rooting so hard for them to be together. I was like eating up every crumb of them being together. I am like officially a shipper of Christian and Daisy. I'm, I'm thoroughly invested in their relationship now after this book. But yeah, overall, I flew through this book. I, I couldn't put it down and I rated it 4.25. So the Magnolia Parks books, I don't tend to rate above a 4.5. They just don't hit for me like that. But it, this was an amazing, this was a great book. It was very fun. I just really like Daisy and Christian's like relationship dynamic. I just feel like it was just healthy. Not, it's not healthy, but they're definitely working towards something healthy. And I, I love that for them. Okay, the next book I read was If Only I Had Told Her and let me just preface this, I DNF'd it. I DNF'd it at 40%, so I gave it a solid chance. Even like the little like author's note that was at the beginning, I was like in the Costco, like I got the, bo the book at Costco. I was tearing up. I was like, this is so sweet. This was obviously so much emotional labor to write this. You know, so I was feeling and I was totally in the mood to cry about this book. I was ready. I, I wanted to cry. I wanted to feel some feels and this did not deliver. I read the first maybe like, I want to say maybe like 60 pages. I don't know exactly. And there were some very decent quotes and I was like about to start underlining, but I was like, let me just wait. Cause you know, when you underline a book and you like have to keep it, you know, I just wanted to make sure. So I went in and I was reading and I was like, there's some very good quotes I'm really liking. But then we're in Finn's head and this man is so freaking creepy for his autumn like i did not enjoy like listen like hearing his thoughts about autumn i i got the ick like please sir just you are better from someone else's perspective and then like i honestly started just like not skimming but i was just like reading much faster through his part because i couldn't wait for him to die it was just terrible being in his head and then we flipped the page and we were in his friend's perspective what's his name um Jack. I literally had no idea who Jack was. I had to like go on TikTok or something and find out who Jack was because he was such a small person in in the first book. Why are we giving him a whole perspective? I don't even care about him. Again, if we had built up Jack's character more, I probably would have been more invested. But when you can't even remember who it was, like, no, just, just no. 
I had to, I, I had to put it down. I was, I just did not care. I did not care. I think this book was amazing in like concept, but actually getting it, this should have stayed in the drafts, honestly. I, I did not like it. Okay, but the next book I read was Bride. And I just picked this up on a whim. I was like, let me just see. Let me just see. Like, let me not judge too soon. I honestly think this was like probably the most surprising book of the year. And of course it's like February, so like we don't know that for sure. But like, I was just like going in with like such like no expectations. Like I did not really think anything. I was like, maybe this will be like a three star. Like I'll just have a good time reading it. Like no expectations. I had the best time. The, like the world building, meaning like political dynamics, having the actual like landscape, like the city and like the forest and all that like described and very easily imaginable. And then having like the side characters be fleshed out it was amazing. I feel like Allie Hazelwood really just went off. I think this is like my highest rated Allie Hazelwood book. I rated it 4.75. This was top tier. I loved it. So basically this book is following Misery, who's a vampire, and then Lo, who's a werewolf. They're forced into an arranged marriage to bring peace between the two warring sides in this world. It was just so good. I feel like we have like, it's just like, it was so good at building tension. And then like, there was just good payoff. Like they just have such a good chemistry together. They just care about each other. Miss Allie Hazelwood, she just, she just really, she just really put a lot into this book. I loved it. I think I've just been in such an era of wanting to read like, things I read as a kid, but like in a new format or like aged up. And this is just giving like aged up mature Twilight and I'm living for it. It was so good. It was so good. Oh my gosh. <sighs> okay, and to top it off, I read this book pretty slowly. I think I read it over three or four days and it's a pretty short book. And again, it's not because it was a bad book. It was because it was just so immersive and like the pacing was fast that even when you're reading like 20, 30 pages, you feel like so much has happened and you're just processing it. It was just so immersive. This was, the writing was just so good. I'm, I'm just baffled, I'm taken aback. Please read it. If you have not read it, please read it. It's just go in with no expectations. Just read the first like 10, 20 pages. And if you're not vibing, leave it, but give it a shot. Anyways, the next book I read was Into the Dark. So of course it's like the fifth book. I don't want to really give too much away, but I feel like once I realized that there was going to be a theme of grief, I'm really glad that Jessa didn't like just kind of sweep it aside like 50% through. It was really something that was consistently coming up and coming back and playing into different relationship dynamics. And it was just really well done. And I'm kind of surprised, but it was very well done. I, I feel like either Jessa like dealt with the cause of this grief recently, or it was very impactful in her life, or it's just, she's done so much research because it was very well like, integrated into the book and the storyline and it didn't feel like it was just kind of there kind of meh like just added in for a, like a plot line and yeah overall I think this was a really great conclusion to the BJ Magnolia kind of storyline it was it was a very good book to read and yeah I'm definitely excited for the next Daisy Hates book because uh, there, like every time I would he read about Daisy or like Julian, I would be like, oh my gosh, can't wait to get what their perspective is. If, like when they're mentioned in conversation or like whatever it is. I'm very intrigued, especially based on the ending of The Last Daisy Hates. I really want to know more. And I rated this book four stars. Okay, so the next book I read was Legend Born by Tracy Dion. And this book is so hyped up. Everyone that I have ever encountered talking about this book loves this book to pieces, like thinks it's amazing. And the concept of this book is fantabulous. Whatever's going on in Tracy Dion's mind, I wish I could live there because the imagination, the way the lore is like integrated into the plot, just the concept is so good. I feel like execution wise was not my favorite. <laughs> and then also just the pacing was very off for me. So again, I do want to start with 
Tracy Dion's writing is very good in terms of her ability to capture just like the scene so that you feel like you're walking through the campus. Amazing. Her ability to describe these fantastical creatures unparalleled. I feel like it's really hard to describe random creatures that are just not out and about, but I was totally able to like imagine all these things in my head. And again, it's a fantastical wor world, so like that's very hard. She did so well with that. I'm very impressed. And then also her romance writing abilities. The love interests for Brie were so chef kiss, so like if Tracy Dion ever puts out a romance, I will be like running running to the bookstore to snatch it off the shelf and like read it not talk to anyone just full hermit just read it because it would be such top tier romance oh my gosh but in this book of course it's a fantasy romance so there's a fantasy aspect and i would say that the fantasy is a much larger storyline than the actual romance so i do have to go in because i have a few problems with that so one is the pacing. So I feel like the pacing was so incredibly slow. The first, I don't know, 100, the first 30%, it was so slow, oh my lord. We had like big events happening, or big enough events, but they would barely propel the plot forward, and it was just so annoying. It was so annoying. I, it was just, it was not even annoying, it was just boring. And I honestly wanted to just put it down, and I was, but then, you know, you hold out hope because so many people are like raving about it. So like when I was reading it, I was like, oh, this is probably like a three stars right now. But then, you know, maybe it'll get to a four, but it was just so boring and I was just really not vibing with it. And then my second complaint is that the sheer number of characters that are introduced with their full government names. And I get it. There's a reason that their full government names are shared, but I just wish that we had done that scene more in a way that it was just, oh, there's a lot of people, their names are being called, but we don't get their names. We get their names once we see them interacting with Brie. Because often things would be happening with these characters and I don't know if I care or not because they're either like, I don't, can't, I don't remember if they're like a bestie or a bully to Brie. It was just me going up onto the Legendborn wiki, seeing, oh, who is this? Who is this? Like multiple times. And that obviously breaks the flow of the storytelling. So unnecessary to bring that many people in. I have read books with large cast of characters, but past close to 10, like, I'm not gonna remember all of you. That was just... That was not it. I You either need to put like, a little glossary or something so I can just refer back to it, but... I don't know, maybe I'm just not smart enough to remember all those people. I can accept that. The one thing that did save it for me, because after all these things, I was like, this is like a 2.75. I'm really not having a good time. It was probably leaning closer to a 2.5. 2.75 but you know it was in that range and I was just not having a good time and I but I had gotten so far into this book I was like I have to see how it ends and the ending is fantastic I I think that was so smart we brought in the because a big part of this book is um Bree's African-American heritage and so having that come back and come into play in the end that was fantastic, fabulous, so smart, because I, I definitely did not see that coming. And that propelled my rating to be higher, but propelled it to three instead of a 2.75 or 2.5, because this book is pretty chunky. And so I'd like to have so many problems throughout the book and then the ending kind of saving it. Like the ending was probably like a 4.5. Again, I, I don't know if we need all these ratings for like these things, but I'm just looking at the ending. It was amazing, but it just couldn't save all these problems I was having while reading it. So unfortunately the pacing and just all these other little issues kind of just impeded my ability to enjoy the story and it's not really making me want to pick up the next book. But again, if Tracy Dion ever writes a romance, I'm definitely on it because she can write chemistry like no one's business. She's truly gifted. I also read as part of a 24 hour readathon uh, one thriller, so Sadie. And that book follows the journey of Sadie, who's a 16 year old, and she's trying to avenge the murder of her younger sister. And that's the story. It's pretty short, so I, I can't really tell, tell you too much, but we're basically following her road trip to do that. And I think that the plot device of having like Sadie's perspective and then also having a podcast that's following Sadie's journey that's set in the future 
was very smart and it allowed us to get more of a perspective from Sadie's family. I rated this book four stars. It was pretty decent. This is a reread so the first time I read I rated it four stars and then I it's still a four stars. I think the ending was quite emotional because we see her family speaking about her and her childhood and stuff like that. It definitely helped the book resonate more with me personally. The last book I read was A Dowry of Blood. So I rated this book four stars and the first time I read it, it was 4.5. I think this time it was one that I it was like my second book in a readathon and so I was getting a little little foggy just a bit not quite more than a bit and because I had already read this book I was just waiting for it to finish because I already knew what was going to happen there was nothing really gripping me but it was still a very good book having the dynamics of an abusive and controlling partner but then paired into a story such as Dracula and like his or like Dracula's Bride. Very smart and I, I still think it's a very good book and I would recommend to read it. And the one audiobook I listened to was the autobiography so it's by Eddie Jaku and it's basically following the life of the author as a holocaust survivor. It's called The Happiest Man Alive and it's narrated by him so it's uh, it's it's quite interesting to hear him. Okay those are my books that I read in the month of February. Thank you for listening and tuning in. Let me know down below what your favorite book of last month was or looking to read this month. Okay, bye!